I grew up in small town America, which had to be self-sufficient. If something was broke, you fix it yourself. I was easily bored if something wasn't going on. So my mother used to send me out to take things apart. Grinnell College was a marvelous experience for me in that it opened my horizons much broader than just Iowa. How do you relate to the rest of the world? How does the rest of the world relate to you? MIT gave me a, you know, a technical background to do work in semiconductors, but none of the, none of the orientation of where you fit into society. And I think most of that did come from Iowa. Bill Shockley was known as the inventor of the transistor, along with Bardeen and Bratton. Uh, I, I wanted to play in the big leagues. I had given a couple of papers. Bill Shockley had heard of them, or had been in the audience, and invited me to come out and join his organization out in Palo Alto. We had a great experience at Fairchild and, and got things going very well out there. It was a, a unique time because all of us who had, had an equity stake in the, in the company, and uh, so people were very, very highly motivated to succeed. I say that the integrated circuit came out of my own laziness, that uh, we took those transistors that were all nicely arranged on a piece of silicon, cut them into tiny little pieces, and then, of course, we shipped them to the customer, and then put them all right back together again. Why not just cut out all of that middle ground and just put them together while they were still on the silicon? So that's what we did. Ideas are a dime a dozen, perhaps. The real ideas that survive are the ones that can be driven on all the way through into the marketplace where you actually have something to sell. At the time, I said I wanted to prove that it wasn't just luck that Fairchild worked. I needed to prove to myself that we could do it on our own. It has been very satisfying to uh, start a company and see it grow and develop uh, a different kind of company around a different way of doing things, which is looking at human worth rather than the usual autocratic uh, organization of the company. I think there is a new management style evolving now, which is paying much more attention to the needs of all employees, not just the select few at the top. It's much less autocratic, much more democratic. What America needs to do is changing. And I think that we're right in the middle of that change at Semitech. And I have always liked to be in the middle of a changing environment. There's a real challenge in uh, making that all work. America's largest business is the electronics business th these days. Uh, that's not widely recognized, but electronics is bigger than autos and steel and aerospace all put together. If we don't succeed in maintaining a healthy semiconductor industry in, the, in America, the chances are that we're going to lose a lot of the other jobs in the electronics business. Father of Silicon Valley is a term I hear used to describe Bob Noyce. How do you feel when you hear that term? <laughs> a little humble, a little proud. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, I, I love the term, and I think that you know what we did at Fairchild and uh, carrying on uh, has really had a major influence on Silicon Valley. It is named Silicon Valley. The impact of the personal computer the fact that it is an every man's tool, not just that for the uh, scientists or the specialists, I think is the one that uh, is the most profound. And I sort of have enjoyed being a part of that whole revolution. Necessity, they say, is the mother of invention. We have a lot of necessity in our society today. And I think the time is here for inventing new approaches new solutions to these various problems so that we can indeed maintain America and indeed the rest of the world as well as the land of opportunity for all of those who will be the achievers of the future. Thanks very much.